In the information age, we have the pleasure to live. An enormous amount of data is currently being exchanged between different data centers, smartphones, or in short, between a wide variety of devices. This big data paradigm, with many zeros and ones, has opened the necessity of rethinking ways to reduce such high magnitude of data. In this presentation, we are going to explain the asymptotic key partition property and how it can be used to decrease the storage we need for such high amount of data. Data can be seen as sequences of zeros and ones. We say sequence when referring to the group of information units. Let us consider a simple sequence of three binary digits, where each position can be either 0 or 1. In this case, the number of possible sequences can be computed as 2 to the power of 3, which gives us 8. Let us now consider a case of a sequence of length 40 bits, which can be stored using 5 bytes of memory. This quantity is actually really small when compared to the storage capacity of our laptops or smartphone devices. But consider now the number of possible sequences of 5 bytes, which is more or less 1 trillion of possible sequences. If we require enough memory to store all possible outcomes of this length, we need the storage capacity of 5 hard drives. Is it possible to use mathematics to improve storage capacity? The answer is affirmative, and asymptotic equipartition property can be seen as an answer. We now consider a source, modeled as a cylindric box, containing red and blue balls. For instance, red balls can be associated with the zeros, whereas blue balls can be with the ones. We consider the probability of getting a red ball is .75, whereas that of getting a blue one is .25. Bearing this in mind, we realize a number of times the following experiment. We take one ball, save its value, and leave the ball to the box. We repeat the experiment n times and compute the probability of the most likely sequence. If we take one ball, the most likely outcome is the red ball. When we take two balls, the most likely outcome is the two red balls. We observe the same when we take three balls. So intuitively, when we repeat the experiment n times, the most likely sequence is the whole red ball sequence, whose probability is dot 75 to the power of n. This probability decays with n as follows. We can see that the most likely sequence appears with very high probability at low n, but its probability vanishes as n increases. So if the probability of the most likely sequence goes to zero as n increases, what are the sequences that appear? This can be answered by taking the interpretation of probability. The probability that a red ball appears is as n goes to infinity equal to the number of times a red ball is chosen divided by the number of times the experiment is run, n. Thus, as n increases, the number of red balls in the sequence tends to n times the probability of getting a red ball, and analogously with regard to the blue ones. The former is of high relevance since the following generalization can be stated. Consider that each black dot inside this circle is one possible sequence of an information source. Hence, we have 2 to the power of n sequences. Among of these sequences, only a small fraction of them is composed of 75% of red balls and 25% of blue balls. These ones are referred to as typical sequences. The remaining sequences that have different compositions are denoted non-typical sequences. The sequences produced by an information source can be classified into typical and non-typical sequences. This is a consequence of the so-called asymptotic equipartition property. Recall the example of all sequences of length 40 bits. Why is now the former property useful in our case? If n is sufficiently high, the sequences given by the source tend to be only typical sequences. So why should we reserve space to store the non-typical ones? Recall that if we want to store all possible sequences, we will need 5 hard drives. Instead, if we decide to store only typical sequences, we only need a USB flash memory.